Hello everybody. Today we will start a new chapter and we will learn how to calculate cost of production. Our objective for today would be defining and drawing and calculating all of the following. So we will be talking about total cost, average total cost, fixed cost, variable cost, average fixed cost and average variable cost. So right now we'll start with the fixed cost fixed costs are costs that are the same no matter what the level of output so for instance whether the company is producing any units or not no matter what they will have to pay these fixed costs they do not vary with the number of units produced for example it could be rent it could be a loan repayment or installments for the bank. So no matter what, let's say I pay rent every month for the factory that I have, which is $1,000. The owner of the land doesn't care whether I'm producing, making profit, losing, whatever it is. All he cares about at the end of the month, he wants to see his rent. I have to pay him. So these are examples of fixed costs. So as a definition, they do not vary with the amount of production that the company does. Variable, it's self-explanatory. So they change. Usually, the more we produce, the more we have to pay. So for instance, in your book, they gave you an example about something called the cost of bare necessities. And it is a... Um, small company run by sue and she has uh, two employees and she's producing bears so for instance to make a bear toy she will need material she will need uh, buttons she will need uh, glue stitching material and so on the more bears she will have to produce the more she will have to buy of the material so these costs usually the more the production the more the cost total cost it takes into consideration both fixed and variable so total cost is fixed cost plus variable cost okay now let's see them graphically before we start solving the exercise together Fixed cost and always, always, always on the vertical axis or on the y axis. Here we have anything related with money. So here I jot down my costs. Okay, and on the x axis I have the units of whatever we are producing. So in this example, the one that you have in the book, it's units or numbers of bears produced. Okay, here they're telling you the total fixed cost that the company has to pay, let's say, including grant and installments, let's say it's $2,000, no matter how many bears, even if she's producing zero bears, or she's producing one bear, or 1,000 bears, she will have to pay the same amount. That is why we've, we can see that the fixed cost is always a horizontal line, okay? Whereas variable costs, as you can see here, here also, I label the same thing so on the y-axis I will also put costs and in this example specifically I will be talking about variable costs and here on the x-axis I will have the quantity of units produced here if we're talking about the bear production so I'm talking about the buttons for the eyes I'm talking about the fluff that I put inside so all of these are materials used in order to produce the bears. The more bears I will produce, the more materials I will need to buy. And this is why our costs will be increasing. They are an upward sloping curve. So this is my variable cost curve. And as you can see, if she's producing zero bears, she will not have to buy any materials. That's why her variable cost also will be zero total cost it takes into consideration both fixed and variable 
as you can see here this is the previous fixed cost that we had okay and this is the total cost now the variable cost they did not plot it here let me show it to you previously it was like that this was my variable cost it always starts from point zero and let me label because you will lose marks if you do not label so here on the y-axis we said we will label it as cost anything related to money and on the uh, x-axis it is the quantity so as you can see fixed cost at zero production it was also um, in, in the book the the fixed cost was given as 200 let us follow the book example so 200 dollars so she has to pay 200 dollars who has to pay 200 dollars even if she's producing zero bears this is as fixed cost her variable cost would be zero dollars if she's producing zero bears now the total cost when she's producing zero since it is fixed plus variable the fixed was already 200 and the variable is zero so the total cost at the first unit of production would always be equal to the fixed cost that's why as you can see look at the red marker here both of them are starting from the same point this is the total cost at 200 and this is the fixed cost at 200 okay now so i just explained for now uh, three different types of costs we explained fixed cost we explained variable cost and we explained total cost and uh, by now you should know how they look like graphically but still we did not solve any examples about it okay let's look and let's explain more about uh, the, the costs of production these are some definitions and I would like you to jot them down on your copybook, please. So fixed costs, they do not vary with output. And these are examples you can always talk about. Rent, insurance premiums, and loan repayments. Variable costs, on the other hand, they vary directly with output. The more the output produced, the more the variable cost. So, for example, it could be cost of materials, performance-related pay. This one, for example, the more the worker is performing, the more productive he is, I might give him um, an increase in his wage. Okay, so this is also a variable cost. Now, if we go back to previous units, when we were explaining the difference between a salary and a wage, which one of them do you think is fixed cost and which one of them do you think it's the variable cost salary is the fixed cost and i always tell you i as a teacher no matter what even if i give you a free period in class or during july or august i will always get my salary let's say my salary is ten thousand dirhams so no matter what month of the year no matter how productive i am i will still get the ten thousand dirhams it is a fixed cost for ais whereas the wage the wage i always give you the example of the substitute teacher so for example it is uh, different every month because let's say this month the substitute teacher was not called there were no absent teachers she will not be receiving a wage uh, let's say in the month of may i had uh, a teacher that was absent and she had to substitute one week for her she will get paid for one week so this is why wages are considered to be variable costs okay let's go back to the definitions total variable cost um, so it's related to the variable cost that we have here and it's here graphically it's upward sloping it increases with the amount of production and then i have finally the total cost which is both fixed costs plus variable costs 
sorry, this is the total cost, this one here. This is the total cost because it did not start from zero. The total variable cost, it starts from point zero. This is my TVC and this is my fixed cost. I can write it as FC or TFC. It's the same thing. Okay, let's solve this little exercise. Calculate the fixed variable and total cost for trading at company X. So uh, they gave us fixed cost, variable, and total. As I know, the total is fixed cost plus variable cost. Okay, so here I have 140 as a total cost, and they gave me the fixed cost as 100. What will my variable cost be at that point? 140 minus 100, it would be 40. Here, the total cost is given and the variable cost is given. I have to find my fixed cost. So what plus 750 gives me 1,000? My answer here will be 250. Total costs, I need to find it very easy. I need to add fixed and variable costs together. So 364 plus 640. It will be 1004. Okay? And these are the answers. And that would be it for the first recording. Okay, so I only explain totals. And the second... Um, a recording we will explain averages if you have any question do not forget to send me on it modo thank you